totally aware that on any given day while I am driving, I could be duly fined and pulled over to the side of the road for DWR, driving while rubbernecking. <laughs> I am as guilty as sin when it comes to watching both sides of the road and trying to keep my eyes peered on the center lines. I'm, I'm guilty without any recourse of action, quite honestly. What can I say? I, I love to study old houses, I, I, especially abandoned old houses. And it is one of the ways in which helps the monotony of running back and forth and going long distance from Salisbury to Baltimore. So I, I rubber neck a lot, more than I should. I know it's not safe driving skills, but it's what I do. And as I'm rubber necking, while, when I consider some of the excessive damage to some roofs, it amazes me, Pastor, how that some frameworks still stand while the roof is caving in. For years, most of us around here have watched that huge barn on the other side of the Choptank River on the Tulsa County side. We've watched it collapse on itself. Trisha, I don't know how many times we've said we've had a few choice comments about, I can't believe they let that beautiful barn implode the way it has over the years. It's been left alone, it's been neglected, and no one seemed to care. There are a handful of other farmhouses on my way to Salisbury and in trips to Baltimore uh, that I've watched over the years, and, and their roof has also deteriorated because these large gaping holes, um, and they're so obvious, not only do they let the sunlight in, everything else has free entrance to the structure. I've got a couple of pictures there to show those truly. I guess the owners <laughs> are no longer interested in the curb people as they let the roof cave in. Speaking of roofs caving in, I read an article recently about the state of Arkansas, which perhaps you didn't know this, but at one time the state of Arkansas was known as America's Wild West. Now that's quite a position to be granted you, and because you are America's Wild West, they have a colorful history to it. As a matter of fact, if you were to tour the state capitol, of Arkansas today, you would hear and see many different colorful stories about the past history of the American Wild West, now known as Arkansas. One of the factoids that on that story that intrigued me was that there was a sagging roof on the original state house. And uh, for many years, the legislators have been warned by different contractors and architects that one day, the way that roof is uniquely designed and in the condition it's in, it is going to cave in. Something irreversible and ugly is going to happen if you don't pay attention to the roof. Well, they never got around to passing legislation regarding replacing the roof. So one day the legislative hall was in full session and full of people. You guessed it, the, the roof that had been warned that was going to cave in on them, caved in on them while legislation was in session. Thankfully, no one was seriously injured. Basically, the very next day, they passed legislation <laughs> to replace their roof. But it wasn't until the old roof fell on their heads All right. that they started moving forward. So as we continue our series this morning, Growing Up Families in a Breaking Down World, 
I, I want us to talk about the roof that you are waiting to cave in. What has to collapse inside your family walls before you move forward by faith? When I began to read that article, I, I couldn't help but chuckle. My first words were, how stupid can you be? I know you don't think those things, but I do. But that was my first impression. How, how stupid can someone be to be worn year after year after year that one day this group came in? And I began to chuckle about how stupid it was. What a historical example it still is. And then I stopped chuckling because I remember something. Just as hard as it is sometimes to get legislation passed to prevent catastrophe. We are just like that. Because sometimes it's me and you that will wait till the roof starts caving in before we do anything to prevent damage. We've all had the warnings. We've all made some horrible mistakes. Big ones. Still with H U G E. Huge. All of us have some painful reminders. We have some bank statements. We have some receipts. We have some less than perfect bodies to prove we've made some really big mistakes. I've kicked myself a thousand times, and you should know this. The board knows it. The finance committee knows it. The trustees know it. I've kicked myself a thousand times regarding the project we had to undertake last year with our roof in the lobby. If I had just gone up one more time, man, there you'd been here with me to do that. And cleaned out the drain one more time before the big storm. We would be fifteen thousand dollars better than our bank account right now. But that's behind us, isn't it? It's behind us. But it was a huge neglect that created a huge problem for us. Well, I've got some good news this morning. We don't stand alone when it comes to making big mistakes and waiting too long to repair something before catastrophe sets in. There is an incredible dialogue in the Old Testament, 2 Chronicles chapter 6 and chapter 7, where King Solomon is talking to the Lord and the Lord is talking to King Solomon with a wisdom beyond his ears. Solomon anticipates some very critical issues that could arise in the future of his nation. Solomon knew the roof was falling in, and he even knew why. So he brings that to the Lord's attention as if the Lord needed to be reminded. It's found in 2 Chronicles chapter 6, verse 24 and 25. What's the big screen? Solomon says to the Lord, if your people Israel are defeated before an enemy because they've sinned against you, and return and confess your name and pray and make supplication before you in this temple, then hear from heaven. Forgive the sin of your people Israel. And bring them back to the land which you gave to them and their fathers. I want you to notice something. First line, if your people, Israel, are defeated before an enemy, that's the roof falling in. If they're defeated because of the enemy, that's the roof falling in. Then he says, why? Because what? They have sinned against you. So that's the what and that's the why. In one verse of scripture, two verse of scripture. Solomon addresses some other things. He sees some other reasons why the roof is collapsing on his nation. Verse 26, 27, watch the big screen. When the heavens are shut up and there is no rain, because they've sinned against you, when they pray toward this place and confess your name and turn from their sin because you afflict them, that here in heaven, and forgive the sin of your servant, your people Israel, that you may teach them what? The good way in which they should walk and send rain on your land that you have given to your people as an inheritance. 